Hey guys, this is the Shad Shank Redemption. When I tied this fly, I wanted to imitate a baby shad. And there's three different things, three different elements that I wanted to have in this fly. First, body design, right? Chunky, like a shad. Next, coloration. When I look at a shad, I see a UV hue across the back and the belly. And I see a lavender and a pink, plus there's a strong lateral line that goes down the, the center of the fly itself. And then lastly, movement. I've got two different articulations in here. One, which is a micro shank on the back. And then second, of course, is this second hook. When you get this in the water coupled with the brush up front, it moves even when you're not manipulating the fly. And if you give it short, quick strips with this brush up front, it'll actually turn and give an incredible side profile. Just looks absolutely awesome in the water. So without further ado, let's get tying. All right, so I'm gonna start with three different materials. We're gonna make the belly and the back of the shad itself. So laser dub in white, ice dub in lavender, and ice dub in pink. And the first step is just to lay down some sections of the white itself. And there's going to be three tops and bottoms for the back hook. And then there's going to be two for the front hook. And what I'm gonna do is start just by trying to create some equal piles of the laser dub. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add to those to make sure that we have, because what you're able to do by going through this process is ensure that you have consistency in the amount. And as you can see here, this bunch has the most, so I'm gonna move that up to the front. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding materials to create that taper. So I'm gonna leave the back as is, and I'm just gonna go here. Again, all I'm doing is using that laser dub to create my taper. Again, it's easier just to look at it this way than it is to try and do it on the hook. After you've tied enough flies, you can do it on the hook, but you're still taking a little bit of a, a chance doing it that way. This ensures that you get everything right every time. The material prep here is really important and it helps you just get through the fly that much quicker. So, all right, that looks pretty darn good. And I wanna make sure these two clumps for the front hook are done up right. So taking a quick glance, everything looks good there. Now it's time to add the color. So I'm gonna start with the Ice Dub UV pink. And all I'm gonna do is take a pinch Put it in the bottom. I'm going to worry about lining these up when I pick them up actually to tie them onto the fly. Just trying to be consistent with the total amount of material. And if you take a look at the picture, right, our reference of the shad, what you'll see is that its belly's got pink. And it's up to you, right? I mean, whatever color you see when you look at the fly is the colors that you want to use. It's just a fun way to be able to blend different colors to create, you know, the illusion of the belly or the back. And I'm going to the Ice Dove Lavender. Because when I look at that fly, I see like that blue iridescence in the back. I'm just taking pretty much equal pinches and just laying it down into the material itself. Okay, so I'm really, happy with how that looks and that's the end of step one all right so let's get tying i'm gonna start with a fish skull this is a micro spine tail shank and i've got my vivas 100 thread just gonna lay down a little bit of a base 
which looks good. Next, I'm gonna grab head neck. This just happens to be some natural mottled gray. And I'm just gonna find two feathers that are of about the same size overall. And I'm gonna end up marrying them. So, got my two feathers. They look good. I'm gonna put them back to back, or I'm sorry, back to face measure. And I want about half an inch worth of material going off the back there. And I'm just going to peel the excess and then clip and get rid of it. Okay, next, I'm gonna flip the two so that now they're facing each other, they're married. And that looks good. Now I'm going to go up the shank right about to the end. Just about a hook eye length or an eye length in front. Align the feathers along the side. It's okay if they're on the same side. And I'll just tighten everything down. I'm going to wrap back on it and then just do a quick clip on the stems, doing my best not to cut any of the feathers. Okay, looks good. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. You just want it to be flat. This actually becomes a, a rudder in the back itself. Okay, next. This is lateral scale from Hedron Flashaboo. This is the fine material. I'm just gonna grab one single strand. And next I'm going to bend it over so there's about two inches coming out the back. Bend it in half, pull it down, and then just do a couple wraps so it runs right down the side of the feather itself. Go out beyond the feather just a little bit and trim. Looks good. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna wrap it over the thread, pinch, hold it into position, go on the other side, align it so it goes right down along the side. And now just cut off. So maybe there's an eighth of an inch coming off the back. Okay, next I'm going back to my head neck in natural mottled gray. and gonna pick off a fat webby feather. Here it is. And what I want to do is wrap back. I'm gonna go over just to extend and kind of eliminate that, uh, that white gap up front. And to do that, I just trim off the tip of the feather, leaving myself a triangle. And now I'm going to tie that triangle in and I'm gonna do it from the bottom. Just spin my thread a little bit to get it nice and fine. So, Come underneath, wrap, get it held into position. Looks good. Gonna grab my feather holders here, which you can get at Radio Shack. They're just electrical wire holders. And now just pull back and then just wrap forward, leaving a little bit of a gap as you come forward. And again, the idea is just to cover up a little bit of that white, give it a little bit additional movement. It just looks nice and clean this way. Okay. Coming up from behind once, twice, bending everything back, coming in front a couple times. Now I'll clip off the feather and then tie it off. I'm gonna do a little bit of a whip finish and hit it with um, a little bit of super glue. In this case, it's zap -a gap just to secure everything so it does not move. With this GSP, if you don't hit it with a little bit of glue or wax, you're just gonna run into trouble. It'll back off on itself. Okay, glue's in position. I'm just gonna tie it off. All right, looks good. 
hit it with the razor, hit it with the Velcro, happy with that. Okay, next, I'm gonna use a little bit of Orvis. This happens to be 25 pound mono, just gonna cut off a short section. So I've got about two inches and we're not gonna use any sort of a bead because what you're gonna see is that I'm gonna come real close to the back hook. And I'm just putting a little bit of tension on it just to get everything into position. Just to create and create a little bit of a bend there in the mono. Okay, so for the back hook, we're gonna do a Daiichi 2460 and that's a size number six. It's basically gonna continue with the use of the Vivas 100. Just wrapping down. Next, I'm gonna grab my tail shank and just going to put it right out the back here. I'm just leaving a very short gap out the side. So it looks like. Looked like the mono had crossed, but it looks good now. I'm just gonna cinch it in a little bit more. Nice. Wrap down. Come back just to secure it. Next, I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of super glue. Feather out of the way. Hit it with just a little bit of that. And that was um, Zap a Gap Thin. You can see how nice that spread throughout the entire shank, thread, hook. Everything's locked in nice and nice and tight. And now I'm going to tie this off because I'm going to actually change to a different thread. Okay, so the next thread that I'm gonna use, this is just a 0 .004 mono. And just get it in there nice and light. Next, I'm going to use some Hedron Flash Boo. This is uh, a little lateral scale, saltwater size. And I'm just gonna tie it in. And the reason why I'm using the mono is because I want it to be able to go right over this lateral scale, as you'll see, and secure it in position in the event that it gets bit, bit by a fish that doesn't come undone. I'm just going to use my rotary feature to go up and back down. best not to get it ripped off. So, looks good. Just gonna wrap right back down on everything. All right, looks good. I'm gonna save that scrap piece for the front. Okay, so just to be careful, I'm just gonna do a little half hitch to hold everything into position. Next, bringing back all the materials that we worked on beforehand, all the bunches of ice dub and laser dub. And I'm just gonna make sure that they're mixed. And remember the pink goes on the bottom and the lavender will go on the top. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to lay them on the bottom of the hook, 50% up front, 50% up back, two loose wraps, make sure that it's center, do a couple tighter wraps, looks good. Now I'm gonna grab the section that goes above it, 
right? So this is the white with the lavender blended in it. Just going to line the tips as best I can. Lay it on top, 50 up front, 50 up back. Did four wraps in there. Everything looks nice and equal. Now I'm just going to come up the shank to about 50% because remember we have a total of three sections for the back hook and two for the front. Again, just going to align the tips. Looks good. Halfway up the shank of that back hook. Two wraps. Make sure that everything's aligned on the bottom. Tighten it up. A couple wraps. Grabbing the lavender and white for the top part. I'm going to line all the tips again, blending the materials. 50 up front, 50 in the back. Good. Pull everything back and come up the hook. Same thing with the lavender, or sorry, with the pink, the white. Lay it directly on the bottom of the hook. There we go. And now I do the lavender. And the best part about laying out all of this material ahead of time, as you can see, you don't have to worry about materials and making sure that you get more materials as you move up the shank. When you do it ahead of time, it's very easy just to tie and not worry. Now I'm just printing all the materials back, wrapping in front. And now I'm gonna grab my hen hackle. This happens to be a, a gray. I'm just gonna grab two feathers that are about equal size. And what these are gonna become is the coverings basically for the lateral line. So these are going to run right along the side of the hook itself, right along there. So I want the length to go to basically the bend of the hook. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. The two feathers are married together, preen the materials back, strip the feathers. Just double check, make sure we got the length about right. That looks good. Start with this feather first. Lay it along the side. If you gotta pull a little material off, have at it. Looks good. Just wrap a couple times in place. Make sure you got everything aligned. Looks nice. Gonna go to the other side. The cool thing is you can start to see the taper. You can see how that lateral line's gonna look. Strip a little bit of material off here. That looks really nice. Hold it in position, come forward, and I'm gonna wrap two times. Get that feather into position exactly where I want it. Looks good. Pull each of the stems back and then wrap everything down and into position. And that looks good. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of zap. Make sure this mono doesn't slip and move on us which it would otherwise. And then I'm just going to do a quick whip finish. All right. All right. All right. So next thing, I'm gonna use a little bit of that 25 pound Orvis mono. Cut off about four inches. And next I'm gonna grab um, a couple glass beads. These happen to be ADOT glass beads that you can get from Michaels. 
And I specifically uh, chose some brown beads because they're actually going to imitate the spots that you'll see. And if you had black beads, they would work just fine too. Um, to imitate the spot that you'll see on the shad when it gets wet. So I'm just going to pull back a little bit, put a kink in that mono, do one last peek, make sure everything's aligned, looks good. And gonna. Okay, so next hook, 230409. It's a finesse wide gap hook by Gamagatsu. And I'm just gonna lay down a base, sticking with my Vivis 100. And you'll notice I've gone beyond the point here and gone down the shank or the, uh, the bend of the hook just a little bit. Going to align my materials and align that mono. So it goes right out. I want it to go out down the shank just a little bit. And now I'm gonna tie that mono in, doing my best to avoid that Gamagatsu hook point, which they're razor sharp. All right, locked in. Tighten that up a little bit. And now I'm gonna check to make sure that that is right. I want that gap to be at least three quarters of an inch and definitely have that three quarters of an inch. And now that I'm sure about the measurement, I've got that mono going out. I'm just gonna do one wrap underneath just to make sure that it stays up. And now I'm gonna come in with my zap thin just to secure that mono in there. So now that the mono is in, we're going to put in that saltwater hedron flashaboo. And so in order to do that, I'm going to tie off my Vivis 100 GSP, come back with the mono. And now I'm going to grab that scrap piece of saltwater flash boo that I left had left over from the previous section. Just wrap it in to make that pronounced lateral line. I'm just gonna hand wrap it this time. And I'm only gonna go up, I'm gonna leave myself two eyes, two eye lengths in front to remind myself not to build the body of the fly any further up because that's where the brush is going to go. And I don't want to cramp the head, otherwise I'm going to cramp the brush itself. Okay. The nice thing again about that mono, you can see I was able to go right over that um, flashaboo, that lateral scale, and it didn't do anything to the coloration itself. All right, so it looks good. Now, I'm going back to my materials. I'm going back to my laser dub and to my ice dub. I'm just gonna align the tips, blend everything together, keeping the pink on the bottom. Just gonna do my best to do 50 out the front, 50 out the back. There's my first fruit. Two loose wraps. Make sure that everything stays top and bottom. Looks good. Double check. And you do want this to be pretty far back, you know, on the shank itself. You want some of it to cover this gap. And I'm going to do the same with the lavender bunch. Just aligning those tips. Put them right on top. Again, 50 out the front, 50 out the back. Lay it flat. Couple loose wraps, make sure that it stays on top. Looks 
good. Preen your materials back now. Now I'm gonna come in front and go up, leaving a little bit of a, a gap there. Let's see, that's about an eighth of an inch. I'm aligning my tips again. 50 out the front, 50 out the back. Right up. Looks good, locked and loaded. And the last piece of laser dub and ice dub combined. Looks good, 50-50 split. 50 out the back, 50 out the front. And preen it back. Okay. And wrap. Okay, that looks really good. Now, I'm gonna do something here which is a little different. I'm actually going to trim my fly before I put in the feather along the side and before I do the brush and before I put in the peacock curl. So if you take a look at a picture of a shad, the way that their bodies are designed is that they go up and then they go down. So their, their best design is like an arrow at the front. So I'm going to start by trimming up, trying to be equidistant between my top and the bottom cut, maintain similarity. I'm going to pull those feathers down on the sides and from that top, I'm going to go down. And I'm actually going to try to cut right to where the feather connects on the back. Okay, looks, looks like that. So same thing, gonna move my feathers out of the way in the back as best I can. Now I'm going to cut back down all the way the tail. Okay, and I'm actually going to go in just a little bit steeper. Okay, so I'm happy with the taper. I'm happy with the design. I'm going to Come over the top and try to curve that a little bit. Run my lateral feathers out the side. Trim just a little more. And do one last trim on the bottom. Next. I'm going to use my anvil taperizing scissors just to get a little bit of that excess thinned out, excess thinned out. I'll do the same on the top here. Okay, next, I'm back to my um, neck, and this is just that gray variant. I'm going to grab two more feathers uh, to go along the lateral scale, to go along those lateral lines, and I'm going to measure right along the side. I want them to go back just about to where that articulation is, so I want it to go back here and just peel the two feathers give them a clip take a look and I can actually go back to my Beavis 100 
going to grab one of my feathers, lay it right along the side. Looks nice. Do just a couple loose wraps, then come forward, crank it down. Looks good. Go to the other side. Same thing. Tip back just about to that articulation. Come in front. Once, twice. Now really crank it down. Make sure it runs right along the side. Looks nice. Trim off those tips. Good. All right. Now just for extra security of everything, I'm going to just hit it with a little bit of zap. Just a little drop. That locks everything into position. Next, I'm going to use my UV2 Peacock Curl. And I'm going to grab, I don't know, maybe 10 or so. Clip. And now I'm going to align the tips as best I can just by holding on to the, the tips. And at the end, what I'm going to want is just maybe seven or eight of these actually. It looks like I clipped off too many. Pull some of those out of there. And I'm going to tie them so that they go back about to the tail. And it's okay if they stick up a little bit. It's okay if they're not the same lengths. So I'm just going to wrap them in loose, come in front, tighten. Because I'll show you a little trick basically to get them secured and to also get them to align a little bit better for you. So, everything is in. Now what you can do, if you have too many, and it looks like right now I've got too many, you can always just pop and pull them out. This is about right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the feathers pinch them between my thumb and just gently pull back and down and what you'll notice is that it gives it a nice little curve and right now when it's sitting you're not going to it's not wet you're not going to see those curve down and onto the body of the fly but when the fly gets wet those feathers will sit right on top and really curve curve really nicely okay so Feathers are in position. All right, next, this is a, a homemade brush. Um, you can use any brush that you like. Um, I love the brushes from Just Add Water, and um, I'll share a, uh, a link in the description for the, uh, the brush that you could use. But all I did here for this brush is I just grabbed um, something from the the bear's den it's called sen yak material and then i grabbed um, my ice dub in uv pink and lavender and blended it all together to make to make this brush so i'm gonna tie it in and the reason for the brush itself is that what it does is it creates water resistance and the cool thing about the water resistance, uh, let me just hit this with a little bit of zap, is that it makes your fly move like mad in the water. And the more wraps of material you put on, more brush, the more um, action you're going to have in the fly itself. And so this is kind of where you decide you know how much action you want what you want your fly to uh, to do and I'm gonna put 
uh, two wraps on here. Just in my mind, that's just enough resistance. So just do a, a wrap there. Pull. And that looks nice. And you can see now that I've put the brush on, I put the peacock on, you can see what a challenge it would be to try and trim the fly right now. It would just be uh, absolutely crazy. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap up. I'm gonna come in behind that brush two times just to get it locked into position. Pull forward and I'll come in front of that brush and grab a crappy pair of scissors. These are just my um, old Fiskars. And you just clip it, clip it off. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with a little bit of super glue. Just using the zap. And I'm not even going to bother doing a whip finish. I'm just going to wrap with the thread wraps on here. Hit it with a razor. And just make sure that the eye of the hook is clean looks good and next I'm gonna come in with my velcro just to take a peek at those fibers and just do a trim and the trim all I'm doing I'm doing a little bit of an angle back trying to create and maintain that taper you know, that you saw earlier. So it looks, still looks like a, a shad. So. All right, so that's it. The Shad Shank Redemption coming in at a whopping two, two and a quarter inches, just right for a, a baby shad. And when you tie a bunch of these, it should only take you between 20, 25 minutes to, uh, to knock one out. So anyway, I hope that helps you out.